What's up guys, this is Josh from Soul Studios. This is a video that I didn't know if I would ever get to make. Because honestly, after about a decade of praying and hoping for somebody to bring back a proper RS-124 plug-in, it seems that Waves has finally done it. Now, we're going to get into the sonics of it. And I think really the only fair comparison or the only comparison that's worthy of making is to the original plugin because there's been some other offerings that's come out in the last decade from Acoustica, uh, United Plugins, the Kush AR1, some of those, but nobody has quite put it all together in one package until now, at least in my opinion. We've got that awesome compression in the standard mode, but then also the Superfuse, which hasn't appeared in uh, most of the other plugins and for those of us that have been fans of the original rs-124 that like i said came out about a decade ago the superfuse was a, a big part of that plugin so anything that's come out since then that was missing that it's kind of like ah it's interesting but it's not a direct replacement so fast forward to about a week ago waves comes out of nowhere and they've got their uh RS-124 made with Abbey Road, which is the only one that's had the official seal of Abbey Road Studios since the original. So it definitely caught my attention. So what I've done here is I've taken a, a blend of three test tones. There's a 80 hertz, a 1K, and 8K. Those are all summed down going into a uh, channel where I was calibrating the original plug-in and then the waves version and then adjusting their makeup gain to make sure it, you know it comes out at zero now the original plug-in as you can see up here and if you remember you can only attenuate the output but you can't increase it so i had to bring down uh the output of the the waves to kind of match but anyway they are all compressing the same based off of those test tones. I had them all hitting exactly 5 dB of compression with the test tones. And then, like I said, had the makeup gain adjustments coming out to zero. So I'm going to feed these channels that I've got set up on auxiliaries here. I've got the original plug-in followed by the waves on the studio setting, which from reading the manual is going to be the closest to what was essentially the third model in the original plug-in, the 670B. Uh, in the Waves manual, they say that's the one that they've modeled. And I did some comparisons, and to me, the studio version of the Waves sounds most like the original plug-in, but I'm also doing the cutter. Based off of the Waves manual, the cutter, um, it, the attack is probably just a little bit slower. So, and it had nothing much to do other than that the tubes were a little bit different age so let's get into it here i'm going to run all of my favorite sources that i would usually put through the rs-124 that's a mono drum room mic bass guitar acoustic guitar and a lead vocal and and maybe some piano we'll see all right let's check it out so as I go through, I'll go back in post-production here and highlight which one you're hearing. You're going to see metering on all of them as they play through, but I'm going to switch uh, with the control surface here pretty rapidly to uh, try to let you hear these in action, one beside the other. So let's start with some mono drum room mic.
Okay, so one interesting thing I, I did earlier, because when I got the Waves, um, I hadn't downgraded my system to Mojave yet to be able to bring back the uh, original plugin, which by the way, if you're curious how that's working here, uh, it is a 32-bit plugin, so as you know, it did not get ported over to 64-bit. Uh, but you can use a couple of programs, one by Sound Radix called 32 Lives, and the other by DDMF Plugins, which is the uh, Meta plugin. I'll, I'll make sure the suggested video that comes up at the end of this one is the video I made before about how to make that work. Uh, the only thing you need to know is that you can't do that past Mac OS Mojave. So just keep that in mind. All right, one interesting thing. I'm going to play the drum mono drum track again through the original plugin and the Waves Studio version. And I'm actually going to flip the, I'm going to have them both where you hear them both at the same time. And then I'm going to flip the phase and uh, let you hear how close they are. I was pretty shocked at the amount of cancellation because, you know, if they were exactly the same signal at the same volume and you flip the phase, you would have no sound. But listen to how much information is lost when you flip, which tells you these are, are pretty close, so check this out. anyway they're a little different because you still hear some information there but uh, that's pretty impressive because a lot of times you'll take a piece of hardware and the plug-in equivalent or you know two different emulations of, of a plug-in of the same piece of gear and you flip the phase and there's so much going on there that there's not big that much of a volume drop um, but that's that's pretty impressive so anyway let's keep moving on bass is one of my absolute favorite sources for the RS-124, it just it just gives it a big old hug, <laughs> for lack of a, a better term. You know, sometimes our language and music doesn't make much sense outside of this world. But anyway, let's check this out. Bass guitar through all three plugins once again. Let's check out acoustic guitar. And as you've noticed, about halfway through, I'm putting them on super fuse mode, um, which I'll put some text up there to help follow along when that's happening. But uh, going back to normal mode and let's check out acoustic.
All right, let's check out lead vocal. It could it be we've all lost touch? Well, I don't know. And maybe it's all just a little much. Well, I don't know. And could it be we've all lost touch? Well, I don't know. And maybe it's all just a little much. Well, I don't know. And could it be we've all lost touch? Well, I don't know. And maybe it's all just a little much. Well, I don't know. And could it be we've all lost touch? Well, I don't know. And could it be we've all lost touch? Well, I don't know. And could it be we've all lost touch? Well, I don't know. Okay, guys, I wanted to take some time and make sure I did this segment right because it's dealing with the hold feature. And that is something that was super important to those of us that love the original RS-124. And that's probably the biggest area of controversy in the new Waves plugin as far as it, it's nice that they added the hold, but it definitely behaves differently. So I want to show you the difference between the two and then give you an example of how I'm using the Waves version to behave more like the original. So I'm going to take the bass. Uh, we're going to start with the original. And uh, for those of you that haven't used it before, I just want to give you a sense of what it looks and sounds like. So here we go. So the way you would use it is like, if I want to heavily compress this bass, you know, 10 to 15 dB, I would go ahead and play it like I just did. And you see how the meter stayed at the peak gain reduction. So now when I hit play this time, listen. So the reason for this feature back in the day was that the attack of the RS-124 can be a bit on the slower side, especially compared to like an 1176 or Distressor or something. So you would sort of prime it and, and teach it the uh, attack of, of the, the peak of that attack that was coming and then it would hold there so now when you hit play on your final mix down you wouldn't have that spike at the beginning so uh, on the original plugin what you could do is you could use this prime button here to kind of reduce it to you know if you didn't necessarily want it to be that heavy-handed you could start it somewhere around here or if it was at the end and there was a uh, ring out at the end of a song you could hold that down so that you wouldn't have the noise of you know it holding on to 15 decibels of, of compression now the newer uh, waves plugin has what they call auto hold so it's a little bit different than when I click here uh, I'm actually going to back down the bass a bit and give you an example of how it is going to work in a way that's probably not going to be pleasing to your ears at first and then I'm going to show you how I'm getting around that so check this out so what's happening is it's it's wanting to do about that 15 dB of hold and if you're not driving into the plug-in hard enough it's almost like a ducking feature when the part actually starts playing it gets quieter all of a sudden so what i found to make this behave somewhat like we're used to 
is you really have to drive the input to where you're getting between 15 to 20 dB of compression. So uh, check this out as I push harder into it. So again, did you hear that? As soon as it started playing, it ducked down. So let's turn it way up. All right, so now that we've boosted the input, let's try to start again and see how that initial transient is handled. So if you've been frustrated with that part of the waves, uh, I would just ask you to maybe try pushing it further than you have yet because again, if you're used to the traditional hold and you hit play and you weren't compressing so heavily, it almost sounded like it was ducking and, and you know you wonder if this thing's not working right. Um, the the primer button that you would use on on the original doesn't work the same here. This is just a drop down menu, which gives you a, a side chain uh, high pass filter and a mix knob, which is nice to have. But anyway, just wanted to point that out, just in case you weren't sure what the hold was and maybe you didn't get to use the original. I've used the waves on a, a mix that I just did, and by really driving it, you know, to push between 15 and 20 dB of compression, I got some good results using the hold. So yes, it is different, but I think it's still usable. And um, you might be asking yourself, well, why would you do the hold if you don't really have something that has that initial spike? Well, one thing for me, like if I've got a vocal that I know was tracked with no compression on the way in, which actually happens quite a bit these days, um, I may do a pretty significant hold on it just to really lock it in place before I start adding, you know, the bluey or something like that for a little color. Um, because one of the best things about the RS-124 is you can do 15, 20 dB of compression and yet it's really transparent. Because the release is so slow that once it's locked in there, it's it doesn't feel like you're doing that much compression. There's not a lot of movement or pumping. It really does something special that's unique to this compressor. So if you haven't messed around with the hold yet, I would encourage you to check that out. Uh, so final thoughts are, since I'm on Mojave, I think I'm going to stay here for a while because I actually really do enjoy the other models that are available in the original plugin. They all sound different to me. I'll, I use them for different purposes. Um, but if you're past Mojave, you don't want to go through the mine uh, field that it is of downgrading your Mac OS. I totally understand. And if that's the case, I really recommend the waves. I think the sound is there, um, especially, you know, with, with the one, uh, six zero zero seven zero B model, uh, which honestly was the one that I used the most on the original anyway. Um, so I think we finally have an RS-124 replacement that's, that's worthy of that name. And, uh, we won't have to complain so much, uh, on the forums like we have done over the last 10 years. But having said that, if anybody that's, um, involved with Abbey Road or Softube or Cool Labs, any of the people that were part of the original, if there's a chance that this, I mean, line for line code of this original plugin could be ported over to 64-bit. I don't think you'd even have to change anything. I think we, most of us would prefer actually that you didn't keep the sound exactly the same. Uh, we would still love to have the original. But anyway, uh, props to Waves. Amazing job. Th this was a nice surprise and um, hope you enjoyed the video. If that's the case, please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, you'll know when the new videos come out. I've got a lot of stuff planned over the next coming months, so appreciate it, guys. Until next time, see ya.
And maybe it's all just a little much Well, I don't know Can we turn?